Hello everybody, I hope you're all very well. Happy Feel Good Good Friday. It's Easter weekend and uh, this is my Feel Good Friday vlog on a good Friday. Double good, double happy. Um, I've got a bit of everything for you today. Um, the sun came out and so did I. Me and our kid, Bogonia Coconut, we went into the yard and at long last, I've been so desperate to get out there. And so she, she's been sort of doing that little poor thing on the glass on the French doors and uh, I've been doing on the other door <laughs> so we went out there today and uh, I did a job that I've been putting off for about two years because I've already done that job about three times in different places removing a buddleia from a wall is a never-ending task they just keep popping up don't they they'll send out a root a shoot from some sort of runner inside the wall and that's it you're doomed anyway i've gone at it with my secateurs my saw a carving knife a drill a hammer and some nails and i put something i put the least toxic thing i could on the stump i used household bleach which i mean you know it's not perfect it's not ideal but it's probably the best thing that you can use um so wish me luck with that <laughs> it'll probably be back to its full size in a week anyway it's gone now it's a dead hopefully and um, i did lots of tidying and sweeping and snipping and pruning and it was very therapeutic Bogonia and i sat down for quite a lot of the time looking at a f the few snips that i'd done <laughs> So I'd snip a twig and then we'd both sit down and look at our work. <laughs> so yeah, so that's the yard and looking, looking much better. Uh, I've got some snacks for you. I've got my own version of the best. <laughs> I know you're all going to go, I don't think so. Trust me with this. Trust me. It's like the orange carpet. You think when you hear it, no, I don't fancy that. When you see it, you love it. <laughs> when you taste it, you'll never go back your life will change forever my pimped up porridge my power porridge i call it i don't really like pimped up as an expression but i call it my power porridge and uh, uh i'll show you how to make that and then um i've got just a few things that i've found in the charity shops not very much a few little uh pieces of jewelry and some knickknacks and a couple of little um fashion items so everything got cats plants snacks and knickknacks everything that i've got on my tin it's in this vlog so uh, sit back get a cup of tea and uh, i promise you you'll be online ordering some jumbo oats before the end of the show <laughs> so uh here we go thank you come on Come on, here she comes. It's sunny, it's cloudy, it's sunny, it's rainy, it's cloudy, it's cold, it's hot. Every 20 minutes, it's like four seasons. Never mind in one day, in an hour. So oh, there she goes, <laughs> it's cloudy again. But I can't leave it any longer. I've been out in the garden, the yard a little bit. I've um, bought a few new plants, but I just can't get on with my life while there's something looming over my head. So it's coming out now. Come rain or come shine. Is that blue? Yeah. Here we go. Just a little half-hearted repotting of those three that were sort of abandoned in the winter. <gasps> Sunshine. Glorious. Okay. Um, uh, it's still looking in an absolute shocking state, but there's some more clearage and the bees are here. The bees are back. Brilliant. Abandoned rubber gloves from the other day. Um, I put prints in there. I took the, um, white schneeball, snowball hydrangea out, even though it, it had started to grow. I took it out because every single year... It produces fantastic big snowball size and shape flower heads but they go brown 
the second that it rains and then the sun comes out again so I've taken them out and I've repotted them and put them down there so I put the purple rain plant that I bought at Christmas from Dobby's in its place but I'm not convinced I think Prince might have left the building to be honest there are some tiny little shoots but I think they came just before one of the big frosts and mm, not expecting much what else is new a bit of tidying a lot of snipping okay I bought a lemon balm because it looks so healthy and it just smelt so fresh and I just needed something and I also bought for the first time in a long time some herbs now I did have this tarragon from last year um, because I love tarragons and mushrooms that's about it really um, but I got some thyme and some rosemary and I got another mint a peppermint mostly mostly I bought them for begonia and for the bees because I used to have the biggest organic herb and spice company in the country in the UK and uh, that didn't end well and since then I've lost my appetite certainly lost my appetite for herbs I have no interest whatsoever however excited by the success of the oregano from last year <coughs> excuse I um, with the bees, the bees absolutely loved it. I thought, okay, I'll just go on with it and I'll buy some herbs for the bees. And Begonia likes to munch on them too. So that's that. I don't think I'm going to be buying a lot this year because I'm not sure I'm going to get over the damage that the frost has done. All my um, geranium collection is a deceased. It's just tinder, dry sticks. Uh, and a lot of things that shouldn't have died in a frost did but there's still a lot alive and the Bee Gees are thriving however today this this Bodleia it's the healthiest thing in the whole garden um, but it's got to come out because I spent about a week repointing this wall it was a huge effort and um, I did a really good job on it, but this Bodleia has sent a huge, big, whooping crack down the middle of it, and uh, it's got to come out. So I'm going to cut that back now, and then I'm going to do the trick that I did on the Bodleia that was at the other side as well. I'm going to drill into the root, if I can get the drill to work, because I've lost the charger. <laughs> it's probably with the rabbits and the phone mount for the tripod <laughs> they're probably all together uh, if I can't drill into it I'm going to hammer nails into the root and then I'm going to pour something nasty down it to kill it I know shame in it no it's got to go uh, it's got to go before my wall goes so there we go I'm going to get the ladders out I'm going to clear some space and I'm going to do that now brace yourself hey bubble whoopee she found something to munch. That's the mint I bought. It's really healthy and uh, it's a lovely peppermint. It's beautiful so that will get its own pot. Uh, I've just picked up the Christmas tree. <laughs> Buyer's remorse getting stronger by the day. <laughs> uh, right. Let's clear a space. Up. I wouldn't advise this. <laughs> this is like an accident. This is like a reconstruction of an accident waiting to happen. Oh, it's not a reconstruction, is it? It's an accident. Just literally. This is just literally an accident waiting to happen. Anyway, here we go. It's coming off. Right. I've got it cut down and I'm going to try and drill it now. Wish me luck. Do you know, I've just tried to drill it and it's quite soft. The, the drill went in, so I'm, what I'm going to try and do is actually saw it off at its base. Okay. What's up? Yeah. You're not happy? Don't 
a nice quiet bed in the sunbeam. Yeah. I'll make you one. Yes, love. See ya. Oh, blue skies, please. I'm in it. Please work. Please don't come back. Oi! I've got a little assistant. Hello. Gone. <laughs> like a phantom. <laughs> there he goes. Oh, it's pouring again. Here we go. Back inside. Have a cup of tea. Is that as far as you're going, darling? I'm going to keep going. Okay. You keep watch. Come up. Come up. Jump up. Jump up. Oh. Come on. Backers, come on. This way. That's going to fall. Oh. Begonia, this way. Boopy. Boopy. Here she comes. The long way around. Jump up! Cuddle me! Cuddle me! <laughs> oh, just having a nice sit down in my tropical oasis. <laughs> At least that's gone. Turn positively Caribbean. Oh no, it hasn't. Um, it feels a long way from my little sort of urban oasis there are signs I mean that's absolutely beautiful and the smell the fragrance is amazing but everything else just looks so knackered God. yes love doesn't it look terrible yeah but you're beautiful oops you look beautiful that's it Rub some glands on the tree. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love you. Good girl. Oh, bees. Fabulous. Bees of Agonia. Heaven. Good girl. Don't bite. Don't bite me. Don't bite me. Don't bite me. Look at them ears. Them biting ears. Blossoms arrived on my pear tree, that's fantastic. That's George's cherry tree, oh, that's Paul the pear, George's cherry tree. Um, what I'm going to do is something I should have done months ago, I should have done it in the winter, but I'm going to do it now, because um, I've got the ladders out. I'm going to prune a John the apple tree. He's not going to like it, but pff. <laughs> tough. He doesn't like anything. <laughs> that's Ringo the plum in the corner. Go on, Ringo, this year, please don't get leaf curl. Um, I didn't get any plums. I got loads of blossom from it last year, but not a single plum. Um, come on, Ringo. I'm going to give you a massive big feed, and uh, I'm rooting for you.
Right, I'm in from the yard in now. Uh, I feel quite righteous because it's all swept and snipped and uh, I've done that job. I'm so proud of that. I'm, so, I'm happy about that. So I'm going to reward myself with my mega power porridge and then I'm going to show you my knickknacks. So this is how I make it. Right then, brace yourself for the best porridge you'll ever have in your life. It will fortify you against all forms of attack. <laughs> so you might be wondering why I've got two pans for one porridge. It's sort of a Goldilocks thing. When this one comes off the bed, that one goes on the bed. It's very simple. Just follow me. So first of all, you need one peacock of oats. One peacock of milk, half a peacock of water, a grasp of sultanas, two shakes of mixed spice, don't whatever you do forget to put salt in. Okay, cook it and stir it pretty much constantly with the wrong end of the spoon. When it's like a volcano and it's going Oh, fabulous. Take it off the heat and then swap pans with your porridge and your almonds. On you go. Leave them in there on a low heat while you're putting your porridge in a bowl. Ideally use a wide shallow bowl because you want as much surface area as you can get on the top because you are going to lather it in soft brown sugar in your toasted nuts. Lathered. Then a little moat around the feet of your parade of tigers, and you are ready. Seriously, look at the sugar slowly starting to melt, and it's sort of turning like treacly caramel. <laughs> this is oh. Right on cue, there's the ice cream man. He can't compete with this. <laughs> Honestly, this is food for the gods. I swear to God, I feel like I could take on the world. <laughs> now, I know porridge is a very um, divisive food stuff you either love it or hate it i have found and uh, for years i was a bit oh no i can't oh i feel a bit queasy about the thought of porridge but then i sort of did this i you know i super powered it up and um i it changed my life honestly i like it that you can almost eat it with a knife and fork i like it thick and lumpy and I like the texture of the oats, so um, you can make it for a practically nothing. I can't think, I'm just sitting thinking in my head how much that may have cost altogether. And I can't think it could be more than 30 pence, maybe 20 pence, even less. Because even though it has, you know, several ingredients in it and you have to fork out to buy the ingredients in the first place, Sultanas, milk, spice, almonds, and oats, and obviously the salt. None of those ingredients are extremely expensive to, uh, you know, pay for in the initial outlay. And um, I've tried the cheaper oats when um, that's all you could get. I mean, you know, when the shelves were bare a few months ago, and um, oh, it, it did make a big difference actually. So. Um, I've got the organic 
porridge oats from Aldi and they are fantastic the bag was 1.99 i think two pounds but it just keeps going and going and going it's like there's no bottom to it um so yeah extremely economical but incredibly nourishing and flavorsome the texture's good it's just like oh it's like having a, a hot warm hot cross bun soaked in cream and nectar <laughs> Trust me, try it. Just try it. Um, so yeah, now I'm all fired up now. I'm all strong and solid to the core. <laughs> and I've got some things to show you that I've got from the charity shops. I meant to go to the flea market on Wednesday, but honestly, that flu really knocked me for six. So my porridge is really sorting me out. Um, I'd say I'm probably 80% back to full power in the mind probably 50 percent i can barely put the words together for some reason it's just completely affected my thinking and my speaking and oh it's it's sort of like what people talk about when they had covid and you know they get that brain fog but i don't think it was covid it was stomach flu um but honestly i can't <laughs> so excuse me for that uh, but I'm up and about and, um, you know, firing on five cylinders <laughs> out of eight. I'm on five out of eight cylinders. Anyway, that's enough of staring at my empty bowl. Let me show you what I got. <laughs> Happy Easter. It's a spring lamb. I understand when you know old women start sort of regressing and they start you know like buying little cuddly toys and they're sort of going back to their babyhood I'm all for it I'm in <laughs> good as curly fur I mean full disclosure I only bought this for you <laughs> I only bought it from a charity shop because I make these videos to talk to you with and uh I thought I'd better do something spring-like. <laughs> I can't give them hot cross buns again. So, uh, yeah, there he is. Look at him. He's a keel spring lamb. He's been through the washing machine about three times because I found him in a basket with some other similar fellows, similar bed fellows. Oh, I'm not convinced about about the cleanliness of uh, children's toys in baskets outside charity shops. <laughs> <laughs> so he was put in a bucket of vinegar and then he was put through the machine three times at least he might go around again but look he's fantastic oh she is she what do you think girl or boy i don't know anyway super cute keel toys and what else did i get i walked into my favorite tout shop after having been absent for about three months, I haven't been since before Christmas, and I literally walked through the door, and my crew who work there said, we've been saving this for you. <laughs> <laughs> Every life should have nine cats, for sure. That is a fact. And uh, yeah, so that was snapped up. I think I paid two pounds and uh, everything's about that price in that shop and they're the loveliest people and it's the best shop in the world and uh, it was like I'd never been away fabulous so it's got a really thick fleecy inside and it's new without tags it's never been worn it's fresh out of a bag and I'm going to put it on tonight after a long soak yes I am it's gonna be a joy oh uh, what else did I get let me see Further on down the same street, not the same shop, I found these two absolute pieces of barley delight. Um, Indonesian, I, th I think barley, carved cat picture frames, vintage for sure. And um, yeah, they're very rustic and fabulous. Look at those faces. Yeah. Lovely, let me show you the back. Yeah, so you can have them stood up like that standard or you can put them on the wall 
They're great. I can't believe it when I found them, and I certainly couldn't believe it when they were two pounds each. <laughs> it's like, oh, thank you, uh, charity shop gods. What else? Just a little dress. Just a little quiet Sunday afternoon number. Oh, Paul O'Grady passed away this week. If you're um, not English, you might not know who he is, but I think, you know, he's an international star, but a complete national treasure in England and the UK. Um, he played a character called Lily Savage, and he was one of the best comedians this country's ever produced. Absolutely hilarious. Joyous. Just rebellious legend, Paul O'Grady. Uh, and... I sort of imagine that this is what his mother would wear. <laughs> and I found it near Birkenhead, which is where he's famously from. Uh, so I just thought, oh, that's the spirit of Lily Savage. Absolutely wicked. I'm calling this one Two Litre Rita. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I could, the smell is quite magnificent. It smells um, of Eau de Two Litre Rita. <laughs> 1980s it smells of as well I promise you oh god I think she was a definitely a pub landlady <laughs> all right Rita <laughs> looking good tonight um I bet she's had her porridge so yeah got the dress got the jumper got the frames and the lamb all in one day over on the Wirral and what else did I get some some jewels here we go same day I also got this brooch and um, I think it's maybe vintage possibly 80s or 90s and it's got cut out stars I've missed one they've missed a star leg in that corner um, which is a bit of a shame if you're sort of a little bit obsessive about details but it's still big and um, fabulous so yeah I thought maybe she could and Day before yesterday, I just popped out to get something I needed and uh, I found, as a bonus, two identical gold beaded Monet bracelets. Uh, and I do think these are vintage. I think these are sort of 70s disco style. And they're on a metal chain. I think Monet gold plate everything if it's gold. Um, it looks gold plated. They look fresh out of the box. So I don't know if it's been like a job lot that's been donated, but they've both got the money tag, and um, I think they're probably worth about fifteen pounds each. But they're absolutely gorgeous, quite weighty, and I just thought they had a really good, lovely sort of disco look. I've tied them together, but yeah, there's two separate ones there. They're nice. Mm. Got it going on. And uh, last piece of jewellery. Not the biggest haul I've ever done, but wowzer! Mid century vintage bubble pendant. Brutalist barnacles. <laughs> I've got all the words. So, yeah, look at it. Isn't that amazing? Pendant, it's got the hoop on the back there. And it's got a nice swing if you're running for the bus. Isn't that amazing? I think they call it um, Brutalist Bubble Statement Pendant, but I think it looks like barnacles too. So, uh, bubbly barnacles. Isn't that fabulous? That was £2. Uh, yeah, so. Small but sweet, I think. Uh, and that's. Oh, no, one more thing, one more fabulous thing. What I also love to pick up. Whenever I see it, whenever I go into the charity shops or the flea market, I actually actively look for fantastic quality sort of luxury soap. And uh, I found this yesterday in the charity shop. It was one ninety nine for the box. New in box, in the plastic. Slightly torn plastic, but it gives you the most fabulous clue of uh, how it smells. And it's, oh my. It smells like Tuscan rose. It smells like you're sitting in a courtyard in Tuscany and um, you just, on, the, on a soft breeze, the scent of the roses comes across in the heat 
with a bit of dust. Oh, divine. You could absolutely forget where you actually really are. <laughs> there we are. I'm not even going to try and pronounce that, but um, they are available on Amazon. And I think they, um, well, I've seen them on American Amazon for $30 about $27, $28, uh, and uh, not easy to get in England, but I've seen them advertised, I think it was on eBay maybe, for um, £25. Was it £25 or was it £35? It was a hefty sum. It wasn't one ninety nine. So, yeah, I love to um, scoop, it up, scoop up luxury soap when I find it. Beautiful. And also the box is gorgeous. Oh, the smell is fabulous. I can barely smell anything, but this... Oh, livening up my senses. Great stuff. So that's everything I bought this week. However, in honour of Easter, I'm going to uh, finally get to reveal them pesky wabbits. Found them. <laughs> I knew they were in a trinket dish. I'm sure I said that. So I've got to show them the sheep random flotsam and jetsam little things I don't know why I do this <laughs> I don't know why I buy them but I, I think I feel sorry for them when I see them <laughs> but there they all are there's the rabbits finally <laughs> these are vintage I think they're painted aluminium <laughs> so that's him <clears throat> excuse me uh, yep. Maybe they're hers. I think they're probably hers. Oh, cute. What's happening here? Oh, it sits like that. And this one, frisky one. Very playful. Uh, little coy one. <laughs> I'm not going to name them on camera anyway. I'll probably name them um, after I finish the vlog. Oops. So there they all are, at long last, the missing of Wabbits, just in time for Easter. <laughs> so there we are, my friends. A happy Easter to all of you. I hope you have a lovely holiday, if you're having a holiday. Uh, get yourself some porridge or some hot cross buns or some chocolate eggs. Has anyone won the Cadbury Scream Egg prize? <clears throat> I know someone ate one where you, uh, the, yeah, Cadbury's cream eggs, if you don't know, um, have been running this competition where if you find a, a white chocolate and a milk chocolate mixed cream egg, you win £10,000, I think. And uh, someone found one, but they ate it. <laughs> oh, how miserable would you be? Anyway, it was me. Uh, you'd know about it if it had been me. But uh, yeah, happy Easter and thanks ever so much for listening. Please subscribe if you haven't already. My numbers are crashing through the 250 barrier. <laughs> I love it. Uh, so I'll see you next week. Thank you. Bye bye.